Whipped cream is my favorite food. That is, that is a fact. These are facts. I love whipped cream. When I worked in a restaurant, I was so stressed out all the time that I would eat like the whipped cream, the leftovers of the whipped cream at the end of the night. And on the way home, I would eat like a bread butter sandwich. Keeping me honest. Hey everyone, I'm Claire Saffitz. Welcome to my home kitchen. Today I'm showing you what for me is the platonic ideal of a summer dessert. It's my strawberry cornmeal layer cake. It uses up lots of fresh berries. It's easy, it's simple, there's whipped cream, and it's a really impressive dessert, but it doesn't take a lot of time. I call this a layer cake, but really it's just one cake that you bake and then you split it into two layers. So it's not like a really elaborate layer cake where there's like six layers and there's lots of construction. It's really a pretty rustic dessert. It's just a cake that's split and filled with berries and cream. So we're not making shortcake? No, did you think we are making shortcake? I did. We're not, <laughs> we're not making shortcake, but this recipe gives you the same thing that I think shortcake gives you. It's like there's fluffy parts and crunchy parts, and then there's lots of cream and berries and juices and what's not to like. For the cake itself, I have all-purpose flour, cornmeal, buttermilk, room temp, baking soda, vanilla, baking powder, salt, sugar, of course, two large eggs, 10 tablespoons unsalted butter, a lemon that I'm going to zest and juice. Zest goes into the batter, juice goes into the strawberries. And then for assembly, I have two cups heavy cream, a little bit of extra sugar, and a bunch of strawberries. It's a handsome lemon though. Not really. So cute. For special equipment, I'm gonna use a hand mixer. The recipe I think originally is for a stand mixer. You can use either one. Um, and then it's just a nine inch cake pan. Make sure you're using one that has at least two inch sides, but that's it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is sort of like a little pre-step in the cake making process, which is I'm gonna hydrate the cornmeal. This cornmeal that I have is kind of like a medium, medium grind. It's not really that coarse, but it's not that fine. And I'm gonna mix it with my buttermilk. And this step just kind of helps to soften the cornmeal a little bit. It doesn't fully soften it, like it's, you know, it doesn't cook it. But I just like to mix it with the buttermilk or the other wet ingredients to give it a little bit of a head start because it doesn't soften that much in the cake itself. And so to that, this is my wet ingredients, I'm going to add my vanilla. So, you know, you don't have to like do this particularly far in advance, just as the first step, give the cornmeal a little bit of time to hydrate while you assemble all the other ingredients. I have a little bit of butter here. I'm gonna grease this really well all around the bottom and sides. I'm gonna press my parchment round into the bottom and I like to smooth it really carefully, eliminate air bubbles and then just brush it with basically whatever butter is left on the brush. This will make it very easy to turn the cake out. I'm gonna set that aside. Now I'm going to combine my dry ingredients. This is a cup and a half of all-purpose flour, a tablespoon of baking powder. This cake has a lot of baking powder because I just want it to be really light and fluffy. I always add baking soda because it does help to lighten the cake a little bit. So that's a half teaspoon. Then my kosher salt. The recipe says three quarters of a teaspoon. I think it probably needs more like one teaspoon. Whisk that together. How is it having a dishwasher directly underneath you? A dishwasher has saved my life and my marriage probably. Okay, so now starting our cake assembly. I have my sugar, three quarters of a cup, and I'm going to zest this lemon into the bowl. So the recipe calls for like two teaspoons of finely grated lemon zest. That's the better part of a medium or large lemon like this. So I'm not gonna measure it. And then, you know, in recipes I like when there's sort of a certain amount of symmetry. So I use the zest in the cake and then I juice it and use some of the juice to macerate the strawberries. So hold on to the lemon. Then I always do this little pre-step. Anytime I'm incorporating citrus flavor into a cake, this is the step that I do before I cream the butter and sugar is I massage the zest and the sugar together with my fingertips. I mean, the idea is that the sugar crystals are kind of sharp and they cut into the zest. And so immediately like the aroma hits you. You can definitely taste a difference side by side when you have a cake where you do this versus if you just mix the zest in with the other ingredients. I have 10 tablespoons of unsalted butter. I'm gonna start on 
low just until everything's combined and then increase the speed and I want to beat it until it's really light and fluffy. That's going to help give the cake a light texture. This is light and fluffy. I'm going to add my eggs, room temp eggs, one at a time. I'm going to beat well after each addition. You want it to emulsify in and stay light and fluffy. So giving everything a scrape. And the next step in the cake making process for a butter based cake like this is to add the wet and dry ingredients alternating, but I use start and end with dry. So I'm going to add about a third of the dry ingredients. So just mix on low just until combined. And then I'm going to add half of the buttermilk and cornmeal mixture. Then half of the remaining dry ingredients. Okay, remaining liquid. Then I can add the remaining dry. I always like to do the last bit of mixing by hand with a spatula. I want to get at the bottom where there might be some unincorporated like buttery areas. Then this goes into the pan. I always smooth it because I'm going to make sure there's no air pockets and I just don't want like a lopsided cake. Just the more even it is, the more even the layer will bake. So this will bake for 40 to 50. My oven is on 350 and I'm going to bake it on the middle rack. The cake has had a nice long cool down. So when I feel the pan, it's completely cooled on the bottom. So we are ready to assemble. One thing I'm going to do is pick out some of the, you know, maybe five berries or so. And this is a trick that I use when I'm assembling a layer cake that has a lot of fruit and cream in it. It's like one thing I don't want to have happen is when you go to cut a slice because of the light whipped cream and everything that you like end up smushing the layers together when you go to cut. So I do this thing where I make like little stilts for the cake. I'm basically going to trim these berries to about the same height. See how they're all going to stand up like that. So the idea is that on the bottom layer of the cake, I'm going to place these strawberries like this. And then the top layer has something it can kind of rest on. So I'm going to go to slice it. I know just like squeeze out all of the filling. You know, our neighbor told us recently that she used to find wild strawberries on our property, which is very exciting. I hope that we find them. So to this, I'm adding two teaspoons lemon juice. This is from that lemon that I zested earlier. Often with macerating, there's like a little bit of liquid added to kind of jumpstart everything. It could be citrus, citrus juice. It could be like a little wine or liqueur or something like that. But I like the acidity of lemon with strawberries. That's what I want. So I'm going to toss these together and I just want the strawberries coated. That doesn't have to be mixed beyond that. So while that sits, and this, the sugar will drop the juices and then it will dissolve. So it will make this kind of reddish syrup. Um, I'm going to show you how to tort the cake. That means separating it into two different layers. When I cut around a cake, I always apply a little bit of pressure with the blade outward against the pan. And that's to make sure that the knife stays flush and I don't end up like cutting into the cake anywhere because I want a nice smooth edge. So I'm kind of leveraging it outward. And remember, I have that parchment under there. So now the cake is upside down. I'm gonna peel off the parchment. And now I'm going to re-invert onto, you could use a cutting board, you could use like a cake pedestal, that's not really necessary here, just something level. I have my serrated knife, that's really important. And I am going to, at first, use the knife to mark sort of a shallow score mark all the way around the cake at the midline. So I'm gonna rotate it, keeping the knife uh, horizontal, parallel to the work surface, that's important. And I like to kind of get down on eye level with it. So I'm going to just eyeball that midline and ro rotate the cake, making sure that I am keeping the knife pretty much in the same position. And this is gonna basically make a, a, like a guide for me as I go all the way around and I actually cut through the cake. Okay, so I have that line. I can see it all the way around. 
And that line also kind of gives a place for the knife to rest. So I'm gonna start to cut through. I'm using like little short sawing motion. So now I've separated it. So I'm gonna take the top layer off, just slide it off. I'm gonna use the bottom of the upside down cake pan as a little landing pad for the top layer because they're delicate. And now I'm gonna take the bottom layer and put it onto my serving plate. You can see this is a really nice cake. It's like really moist, it's really flexible. So now I have my macerating strawberries. You can see they're already starting to look juicy and there's already some liquid in the bottom there. And all I have left to do is whip my cream. I have two cups of heavy cream. I'm using this giant bowl just because my other bowls are in the dishwasher and I don't use one that's too small. Better too large than too small. You do want a fairly large bowl for two cups of cream. And likewise, the beaters are in the dishwasher. So I'm using the whisk attachment, which I never use, but actually is pretty good at whipping cream. So I'm gonna start on kind of low. And as it starts to thicken, I'm gonna increase the speed. And this cream is unsweetened. I'm not adding any additional sugar. There's plenty of sugar in the cake and in the strawberries. Okay, so now this is getting thicker. Once it starts to really hold the trail of the whisk, that's, or the beater, that's when you know it's getting firmer. Okay, this looks good. This is somewhere kind of between medium and firm in terms of the texture. You can see that? Like it's still kind of sliding around, but it will hold its shape. Okay. Ooh, put it over your head. No. <laughs> Not gonna put it over my head, Vinny. Here are my stilts. I don't know if stilt is the right word to describe this. My supports. Pylons. My pylons. And I'm putting the strawberries before the cream for a couple of reasons. One, I think it leads to like better stability when you put the top layer on. But also I want some of those juices to like drizzle and dribble down to soak the cake. So I can just kind of pour some over. So I want some of the berries peeking out around the edge so that you see them. Then about half of the cream. And I like to let the cream like drape itself. Like with, I've learned from like my friend Sue and other food stylists that I've watched working like, the less you kind of fuss with it, the better it looks. And then I'm gonna just spread this around a little bit to make it even. I don't put it quite up to the edge because when you press that other layer on top, it will like squish out the cream a little bit. Now, top layer goes on and I just can slide it sort of off of its little platform. When I lift up a cake layer, I spread my fingers all the way out, almost like a spatula to be able to lift it without breaking it. Now I'm gonna to top it with the remaining cream and berries, but I'm gonna go cream first berries on top. Just visually, it looks better that way. Let it kind of drape onto the surface. So because of the rustic look, rather than like my offset spatula, which I use for being really precise, just kind of spread this with the back of the spoon. Berries go on top and just kind of letting them like fall gently onto the cream. This is definitely a cake you don't want to like fuss with it a lot. It's kind of hard to bake with things that are super ripe because you just want to eat them. Often the thing that I'm baking with is like overripe stuff because I like bought too much. But I completely agree that like with real in-season fruit, sometimes I'm like, what would I do with it that's better than just eating this? That's a problem I have with peaches a lot. It's like I love peaches so much. I actually don't bake with them that often because I'm just like, why would I not want to just eat this? The final step before slicing is to just take all of that leftover strawberry syrup from the macerating berries and to pour it over top. So what you could do is you could slice it and then pour it over each slice or just top of the whole cake. So I'm gonna slowly drizzle it over the cake. Time to slice. You will definitely want a serrated knife. It's not the easiest cake to cut because you gotta get through the layer of berries on top, but you can also kind of move them out of the way to make your life a little easier. So same motion as I used to split the layer. It's like little sawing back and forth. I remember when I tested this recipe, I was at my parents' house and they were going to like, to see friends of theirs and they brought it over to their house. And then when we got a text message like an hour later, that was like, we ate the whole thing. <laughs> Which is always the feedback I'm looking for when it comes to recipes. Is that when you know that the recipe is done? I have my own set of criteria for when the recipe is done, but that is certainly like, that is like proof of concept. Like I'm always looking for proof of concept for a recipe. And anytime it's just something that like people report enjoying eating, then I'm like, that's proof of concept. This cake is delicious with ripe berries, but it's still really tasty. 
with like, you know, grocery store berries that aren't the best. <laughs> Squish out all the cream. Mm. The cake has like real substance to it from the cornmeal. And I love the texture that it gives. It really will give you, I think, a shortcake kind of texture when you try it. And then of course, the combination of berries and cream. Classic for a reason, can't go wrong. But it all comes together here, I think, in a really special way. So good. Mm. This is my favorite kind of summer dessert. It's loaded with fruit, really, really simple. Comes together easily. I hope you try it. Make it with seasonal fruit all summer long, from strawberries to blackberries to stone fruit. It's really fun to bring you beautiful fruit-focused summer desserts on our Dessert Person channel. And don't forget to like and subscribe.